Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, back in the studio. It's Tuesday. Get out and vote. All right, Ned. How did the Lady Bears do last night? Not very well. Tough game. You knew it was going to be a tough game. Most of the time when D1 teams open their season, they do it with a put opponent and blow them away and get everybody excited. Get the wheels greased And the up. Lady Bears opening opponent was Mizzou. Just by the way things happened to work out and the schedule that they arranged, and Mizzou came down here to play, and Mizzou is pretty good. Southeastern Conference team, they're going to be pretty good. Like they're, <laughs> they're playing Tennessee. You know, this is one of the most storied programs in the world. They're also playing the reigning national champion, South Carolina. So they come down here to open up with Missouri State, and they beat the Lady Bears 68-51. to uh, Lady Bears up against some pretty good competition. Incidentally, Missouri's leading scorer in this ballgame with 17 points was Haley Frank. Probably not mean anything to you, Mike, but she's the All-Stater from Stratford. Oh, I remember. 122 straight victories for their teams. Anyway, Haley scored 17, and there was another player who had double figures, and they were the only double-figure scorers in the game. The Lady Bears had none. It's going to be a tough year shooting for them, but then again, many of their opponents are not going to be of the same caliber as Mizzou or Southeastern Conference teams. So <clears throat> you take everything with uh, understanding. Lady Bears do le- lose their opener, 68-51. They'll have more games coming up here in, in the month, and they go on the road for quite an extended period. But we'll see what happens. I think it's unfair to judge how this team is going to do after just one game. Yeah, but I know you've been around long enough. you got a feeling about this season. Uh, the shooting uh, shooting wasn't there. They shot under 50% from the field, which that, that's understandable. But they also shot well under 50% from the foul line, and that is not acceptable. No, it's not. Well, I'll tell you right now, the football season may have turned into a little bit of a dumpster fire and uh, kind of a slow start for the basketball season, but in the last few years, Missouri State's soccer teams have just been out- outstanding, men's and women's, and now the women's are going to the NCAA. First time in quite a while for the Lady Bears <clears throat> soccer team to be in the NCAA, but they are going. The men are about a week or two behind the ladies in terms of their tournament. Ladies' tournament's going to be first, and then the men's will be second. The ladies' NCAA opens up this weekend. And Missouri State will be in Fayetteville to open things up. They're playing Arkansas in the first round. Now, of course, this is one and done. You lose and you're out of there and the season's all over. I think this is a pretty good uh, soccer team. I know the men's is. They're very good. They're going to be going into their conference tournament and they'll host all the games here in Springfield. But fact of the matter remains that both of those soccer teams are very good and the Lady Bears get a crack at the NCAA and... We'll go after the Arkansas Ball Club and see what happens, and that is Friday. They're playing early Friday evening in Fayetteville, and it promises to be quite cold. Yeah, (laughs) it's going to actually feel like uh, November this weekend, especially for those of us going up to the game on Sunday. It is going to be chilly. All right. So I was surprised by this. I I mean, they... they They beat arguably one of the best teams in football earlier this season in a fluke, but uh, that wasn't enough to keep the coach around. And then I was also kind of surprised at the hiring they did after they let go the Indianapolis Coats head coach, and now they've got Saturday, the interim. They do, and that, this is kind of interesting, too, to fire a coach. This, this is midway in the season. Uh, evidently, the... Uh, ownership of the Indianapolis Colts did not figure that the team is going in the right direction, and they unloaded Frank Reich. In his playing days, one time All-America at Maryland, Reich had some pretty good years. He's a QB, but he couldn't seem to translate that. Yes, they did get a win over the Kansas City Chiefs, a bit flukish, but still they got a win over them. And then Jeff Saturday, who is uh, one of their very best offensive linemen ever in the history of the club, The thinking is that he'll be able to translate some of that into the players and be able to articulate some of their playing level. Don't know. That remains to be seen. It's the players who get out and play, not the coaching staff. We'll see what happens. But yeah, Frank Reich getting the boot at Indianapolis. Saturday have any any coaching? Assistant coaching. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, we'll see what happens. I think it's an interesting play, but at the same time, I mean, he's, you know, what else he can do? You get the rest of the season. Let's we'll see if he can do it. So the St. Louis Cardinals have kind of shuffled the deck, moved some guys up into different positions. Um, surprised? In a sense, yes, but then in another sense, not at all. They had some had some departures in their coaching staff. 
uh, including the hitting coach, Jeff Albert, and the pitching coach, Mr. Maddox. They both decided to leave the program. Now, maybe they're going to other ports of call, and that remains to be seen. But the Cardinals needed to fill some positions. They also lost their bench coach. The bench coach, Mike, is the individual who sits right beside the manager and advises. Well, who did they name as their bench coach? That's the interesting one. How about Matt Holliday, who was here just about a month ago speaking out at Hammonds Field? But this is kind of an interesting choice, in my opinion. Holliday, of course, is one of the Cardinals' greats. He's in the Cardinals' Hall of Fame. Actually, when you see him, he's he could still play. He's huge. He's about 6'5", and oh, 250, 260, hit the ball forever. But he's coaching now and was coaching for his brother at Oklahoma State. In fact, I told Mr. Hunter, I said, well, next spring when Oklahoma State comes up here to play the Bears, you'll be sitting over in that dugout. I said, yep, I sure will be. Uh, he won't be because <laughs> he'll be with the Cardinals as their bench boss. So it's Matt Holliday who's going to be assisting manager Ali Marmol, who is a longtime buddy of his. Holliday gets the bench coaching job. The new batting coach is a guy named Turner Ward, who'd been the assistant batting coach with the Cardinals. And the new pitching coach is Dusty Blake, and he's a longtime Cardinal roving scout and things like this. So that's the the key individuals on the coaching staff for next year. Yeah, it's been interesting to see that. All right, last night, Monday night game, pretty much in the hands of Baltimore the whole time. They're in a row. They, they've won now four in a row, and Baltimore knocks off the New Orleans Saints. The Saints aren't really a very good football team, but they beat them by a score of uh, 28 to 13, I believe the final score is. Uh, 27 to 13. 27 to 13. The Ravens win it. And Baltimore is pretty good. They're now 6 and 3 on the year. They're going to be a challenger when it comes to playoff time. Key is where will they play mm. the playoffs? You want that home field advantage when you're in the NFL. And Baltimore is certainly trying to get that. But they are playing better. They're a much more cohesive unit. And uh, they certainly showed that last night with a decisive win over the. New Orleans Saints. And it's such a crazy thing right now in the AFC. You've got the Bills, Chiefs, Ravens, who, you know, historically the last few seasons, that's the way it looks. But the Titans and the Jets nipping at our heels. Crazy, crazy turn of events this season. But we're only halfway there, so we got a lot <laughs> left to play. All right. Uh, last night uh, was also opening night in college basketball pretty much across the country. Um, everything kind of looking the way it should. Talked about the uh, Lady Bears and their opener, which was not successful. 68-51, Missouri beat the Lady Bears here in town. As far as most of the men's teams are concerned, most of them opened last night. Number one, North Carolina uh, played North Carolina Wilmington and uh, beat them rather easily. Kentucky played Duke playing their first game under a new coach, John Shire, who takes over for Mike Krzyzewski, who retired. They come away with a win, 71-44 to over Jacksonville. That's a, that's a pretty nice opening opponent for them. Missouri. Missouri opened the season up in Columbia. This is the men's team, the Tigers. They played Southern Indiana. That doesn't mean anything to you, Mike, but Southern Indiana is a newcomer to Division I. In Division II circles, they played in the same conference with Drury, and they were tough. The Screaming Eagles, they gave Missouri a hell of a fight. 97-91 to was the final, and Missouri did just hold on to win that game. So the Tigers get a real test in their opening game. And uh, down in Fayetteville, Arkansas played North Dakota State. Now, North Dakota State's not in the Bears' basketball conference. They are in football, as everybody knows. In basketball, Arkansas beat them by a score of 71-58, to and North Dakota State played with them for quite a while. So they are two teams on whom we're looking very closely. Kansas got a big win in their game, and Kentucky gets a big win in their game. So really, there were no major surprises last night. But yeah, hoops is underway, and it'll make a lot of noise from here on in. It's good to see you've got your Chuck Taylors on and ready for another season of Hoops, Ned. <laughs> Get your ass out of here and go vote. I'll see you tomorrow.